have to say, I, I feel that I'm ignorant here, but uh, in Iceland, uh, I don't know much about what happens there, except I've heard there's a lot of drinking in Iceland, which has always intrigued me. Is that fair to say? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, well, what a lot of people don't really know is that beer, uh, beer was actually outlawed until about 1990, which was when I was born. Why was beer outlawed? Uh, I don't understand why that would be the case. It's it's a fairly innocuous alcoholic beverage compared to others. Oh, well, not in the hands of Icelanders, I can tell you that. Um, <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. All right. So they didn't want you guys. So what did you guys drink instead of beer? Well, the thing is, uh, the stronger the spirits and the clear liquids, those were all still... Um, you could you could buy those. They were just so expensive that the uh, the quote unquote common man couldn't really afford them. Oh, um, so e essentially, I think it goes that the, the the logic goes that the you know the rich and the powerful they wanted to keep drinking, whereas it was seen as a bit um, gauche for the the commoners to be drinking. So they just outlawed beer. What terrible terrible leadership you had! Uh, <laughs> it's completely missing the point of what it means to be alive. So, uh, what? T tell me, what are these spirits? So, what are you drinking? I'll tell you this: I've been to many years ago. I went to Finland, and I have a very strong bond with the people of F Finland. And everywhere I went, they offered me Korskinkova, and Korskinkova did taste like something you would put in a MIG fighter to make it go faster. Uh, it, it, it was a powerful, powerful, powerful alcohol. Do you have anything like Korskinkova oh, in, yes. uh, in, in Iceland? What do you have? Absolutely. We've got something called Brennivin. Brennivin? Yes. It's essentially burnt wine. And it tastes like, oh, tastes like gasoline. It just clears you right up. Uh. If you're feeling a bit stuffed, just a drip of it will clear it all up. So is it technically a wine that someone just put on the stove and burned? <laughs> yeah, I believe so. A lot of our sort of most traditional drinks and foods are sort of discovered by accident, it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> like Iceland. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right. Iceland itself was a total, totally <laughs> founded accidentally. And uh, and you have the same thing with all of your foods. So your drink is burnt wine. And then your, your uh, what is your favorite deal? Like some turkey that fell on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> I'll a, tell a, you. A pie that fell off a shelf <laughs> and smashed is your national dish. Yeah, it's on the flag, actually. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but no, the um, I can tell you that probably uh, you won't get any more traditional Icelandic than uh, burnt wine and then fermented shark. Oh, right. Uh, I've heard about this. I did hear about this. In Iceland, you, you eat fermented shark. So what's that all about? Because... I'm trying to use find the right word. Stupid. There you go. Oh, yeah. Oh. That sounds stupid to ferment a shark. I it's, mean, literally let a shark rot and then start gnawing away at it. Oh, yeah. Even better. We actually bury it in the ground and let it rot. Then we dig it back up and eat it for some unknown reason. Again, this was an accident. Someone, <laughs> someone said, well, let's just bury this shark. We've got plenty of food. Then realize later, actually, we don't. <laughs> Where did I leave that shark? Well, I think you buried him over there. Hey, let's dig him up. Wow, pretty rancid. Let's start to chomping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I shouldn't have said stupid. That was uh, culturally uh, ignorant honest. of me. But also very honest. You're eating a rotten shark. <laughs> right, yeah. There's really no defending it, really. <laughs> and you wash it down with burnt wine. Oh, yeah. Just to okay. really drive home the self-hatred, for sure.